how to do forensic prophecy by imagination. Forensic prophecy refers to prophecy that is done with vivid details revealed by the Spirit of God through a prophet or prophetess or a prophetic person. The target is to bring solution, finishing the prophecy with miracles, bringing glory to the name of the Lord. Prophecy in itself refers to an access to a message from God revealed through a prophetic person meant for uh, an addressed audience or specified audience doing forensic prophecy by imagination. I want to bring you to the understanding that prophecy leans so much on the power and effect of imagination. One of the greatest assets that every human being has is the mind. It's the greatest picture given to us within which every great thing synthesized in form of thought and then processed. Imagination in man brings us to a place that reveal clearly that indeed we are the image of God. Whatever will be, like as God did in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, let us create man. It was a thought. He had seen in his thought a thing called man. Let us create him. It was from then existing already in his thought. Let us create man in our own image after our own likeness. So they went on, that is the Father, Son, and the Spirit, and created him in their image after their likeness. That's how God created us. For you to be able to prophesy and prophesy at the forensic, you have to be able to leverage on the power of your imagination, which takes place in the mind. The other relevant question at this point is, is it possible for you watching me to prophesy? If you ask me that question, I'll say yes. Why? Because the moment you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, with evidence of speaking in tongues, and with the fruits of the Spirit showing forth in your life. You stand a chance of looking like God. So the same way he God can look into the future before the future comes to be, he now endows you with this ability. Every child of God can prophesy to some degree once you've come to this point, which is referred to as the state in which you've been filled with the Spirit. Now, when you begin to have the interests and beyond interest, the calling into the prophet, when it goes beyond interest, you discover that it's no longer you that is having a hunger to prophesy. There seems to be something deep within you that tells you that you belong in the company of the prophets and that you can see things before they come to be. You can hear the voice of God. You can see in the realm of the spirit. You can perceive things. There is something that resonates within you that tells you this is where you belong. But at the time, you are not able to do this. One of the places to start with is to lean on the power of your imagination. Because that's the same place the Holy Spirit is going to work on. Uh, pick you from and take you to the, the class of prophets and eventually launch you into the prophetic world. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, the word says that God saw that man became exceedingly wicked and the thoughts and every imagination in the heart of man, you see, was evil continually. Evil multiplied on earth because men began to imagine evil. So it became the reality that the earth realm experienced. In Proverbs chapter 23 and 7, he said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So when he thinks goodness, goodness becomes of evil. So when he doesn't think evil, but thinks good, that's what happens. Now, when you think of something great happening, that's what will happen. But there is spiritual mechanism for the occurrence of this reality. So we move to the book of Daniel. And Daniel said to the kingdom of God, in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 29, he said, As for you, 
O king, thine thoughts or your thoughts came upon your head while you were on your bed. And he said, paraphrased, that God himself showed to you, revealed to you through your thoughts in the course of your thought work. The things that shall be afterwards. So Nebuchadnezzar eventually was able to tap into the prophetic realm when he engaged in in-depth thought work. The thing prophecy begins with thought work. Somebody somewhere would be saying that when God calls you into the prophetic, he just gave you everything and you begin to prophesy. Uh, there's nothing to learn about it. No, there's something to learn about it. That's why he met Peter and John, James and Andrew and the host of others and called them and said, come, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Peter wasn't a prophet. He wasn't prophetic. He hadn't any tinge of prophetic, but Jesus taught him how to prophesy. Jesus imparted him to how to prophesy as he followed Jesus. He was trained. So an adult who was totally far from the prophetic can be trained to prophesy inaccurately and eventually receive the impartation or transfer either of the two and begin to prophesy like nobody's business. The thing is, you have to know how to customize your mind so that it becomes a seat that allows your spirit to travel in the spirit realm and contact realities that initially thoughts that are meant to take you into the prophetic realm, make you prophetic, and hence make you accurate when you prophesy. We'll begin with things that exist. Somewhere along the line, you are going to experience or shift from things that exist to things from the imaginary realm. In which case in the spirit realm, there is no imaginary realm. Because everything that can be accessed in the imaginary realm can be made to materialize, giving the relevant attention. So Nebuchadnezzar fetched that for prophecy, but he couldn't understand it. Then Daniel was called to interpret the prophecy after narrating it. So Daniel took, went back, prayed, took a deep thought that it was revealed to him through thoughts. Because eventually, while thinking, he traveled or broke into the other realm where imagination serves as the access point. So the prophetic realm being a word in itself, imagination gives you the ease to overlap between this realm and that realm. So a healthy thought patterned lifestyle built by rich practice of meditation gives you the access to gain access to it. David said in Psalm 119, as one fought in it, that my eyes prevent me of the night of the so that I am meditate on your words. The secret is that being prophetic himself, handling the thought like the best way, is able to navigate through a physical life, being a prophetic mafia himself. So he picks the realities that he's supposed to work with, run with. So he fought 66 battles without losing. He had mastered his approach to the engagement of his thought. In a nutshell, I want to say that prophetic begins with a thought word.